Hi everyone, welcome back to Positive Strides for my second hiking vlog. In this video I will present to you a fantastic hike at Derwent Dams and Derwent Edge in the Peak District National Park. I hope you enjoy watching. Hi everyone, I've just pulled up at Derwent Reservoir. I think it's about 50 miles, but we'll see how we get on. And it's a glorious day out here. It's quite busy. It's the Easter holidays. We've just been predicting this lovely warm weather. Let's get stuck in. If the UK gives you sun, you're gonna get out there and make the most of it. Okay, let's get going. I've just packed up the road a little bit further up from the main car park, which is called Fairhomes. There's like facilities there, there's a really nice cafe. So I like to avoid the crowd, so that's why I park a little bit further up. So we're heading there now, we'll start the walk. Yeah, we're just about here in the main car park. It's a good idea to use a facility if they're open, fingers crossed. This map found in Fairhomes Car Park details the many routes that you can choose from to suit your ability. From majestic reservoirs and quiet forests to wild open spaces, there is something for everyone. The majority of the land around the reservoir is owned by Seven Trent Water, and of that, around half is woodland. This is the Upper Derwent Visitor Centre, which has toilets, cycle hire, a refreshment kiosk and ranger services. Visitors can explore the fascinating history of the valley, take part in the range of activities available or just enjoy the refreshments. The Derwent Valley Reservoirs provide water for the UK cities of Sheffield, Derby, Nottingham and Leicester. The three reservoirs form the largest area of open water in Derbyshire and the Peak District. They have a combined capacity of nearly 46 billion litres. Victorian engineers identified the valley as being ideal for the needs of the local population and growing industries as it was deep and long with narrow points for dam building. The first two dams, Howden and Derwent, were built between 1901 and 1916. The similarity between the Upper Derwent Valley and the Roe Valley in Germany led to the Derwent dams being used in 1943 for target practice by Lancaster bombers of the RAF 617 Squadron, better known as the Dambusters. Since then, this event has been regularly commemorated in the Derwent Valley with flypasts of old bombers and aerial displays. There is a small museum on this theme in the west tower of the Derwent Dam. So now we're just walking on the left hand side of the first reservoir. Just to give you an update on why it's so busy, it's the Easter holidays and yesterday the UK reached another date in the calendar to remove the restrictions. We can now get in the car and drive for days out. A lot of people have been stuck indoors. It feels like we've been hibernating to be honest. It's just so nice to get out and get some fresh air, especially when the sun comes out. Can you imagine living here with this on your doorstep? <laughs> that would be uh, the dream. The further away you go from the car park, the quieter it gets. I'm just longing to get away from the crowds. So the great thing about Derwent, as you can see, this path that goes up there, there's loads of different paths to suit your ability. So if you want to do a short walk just around the bottoms of the reservoirs, then that's not too demanding. So you can do that. You can have a nice long walk around all the reservoirs and then you've done still quite a lot of miles. And then if you're a more advanced walker who wants to go up through the hills, you can do that as well. There's so much variety and that's what I love about walking. It's suitable for everyone, no matter what your ability. If you want to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, you can do that. If you don't, then you don't have to do that either. It's nice to have options. So there's no excuse to not go out and uh, make the most of it. So I thought what better way to show you the route than get an old style paper map out. It's huge. It covers the whole floor nearly. So we started here at Fairhomes and we followed the reservoirs, Upper Derwent Reservoir and went all the way around Howden Reservoir as well. The real fun begins when you start going uphill. We eventually turned left through Hancock Wood and was on a very steep section up here. It went up to Lost Lad to Bactor, 
And we followed a path along the Derwent Edge, taking in the wonderful views of the amazing rock formations, Cakes of Bread, Salt Cellar, Wheelstones. We got to this junction here and turned down towards Lady Bower Reservoir. And at this point, you can choose whether to go the short way back to the car park here, or if you want a bit of an extended version, this is what I did. I carried along around the reservoir, Lady Bower, crossed the bridge and returned down this path next to the reservoir back to the car. You could actually just take this with you on a hike and use it as a tent. <laughs> Look at that. That little enclosure. Creating the first two reservoirs was a huge undertaking. Relocating residents, organising a workforce, preparing the ground, laying pipes, building bridges and dam heads. A new temporary village sprung up nearby to house the hundreds of workers. The town was named Birchin Lee, nicknamed Tin Town, as the buildings were made of corrugated metal. Despite its short-lived existence, the model village had every facility. By 1912, Howden was finished and the Upper Derwent Reservoir below it four years later. The population rose to approximately 900 people. The hundreds of workers and their families packed up and left. Tin Town was dismantled. Remnants of Tin Town can still be seen when walking to the west of Derwent Reservoir. Can't believe it. It is the 30th of March and I've had to take my coat off. So I'm now down to t-shirt and shorts. First time I've worn my shorts this year. So exciting. <laughs> It's like I'm going to get run down by horses. Help! A little bed and breakfast place here. What a beautiful location. I'd definitely stay there. So we've reached the next reservoir to walk around. Howden. For some reason I keep getting attacked by bumblebees and I think it's something to do with the fact that I've put sun cream on but there must be something in that that's attracting them to come and attack me. <laughs> Seems to have these little markers around so you know how far you've walked. All these trees are. Huh? I've never seen it this busy before. It's the UK coming out of hibernation, and it's not normally like this. The hills are calling now. So we're now leaving the road. Kilometers, guys. Doing good. Coming to the end of this trip. I'm guessing it's going to be absolutely packed with people. Based on how many cars I've seen, it's also a really popular route as this for cyclists. It's a nice track for hikers, it gives you the options to go up the hill, which is what we're going to do very soon. The bridge just before Slippery Stones is usually a tranquil spot where you can peacefully rest and hear the soothing waters. Not today, as this child will demonstrate for us now. I 
decided I'm definitely not stopping here. Humans everywhere. <laughs> so when you get to this sign, you can go left and that heads to Langset. I'd really like to do that route someday. Definitely gonna add that to my list. But for now, we're gonna go right on this path and go back to Derwent Valley. Contractors and volunteers have been working with the National Trust planting 100,000 saplings along the steep valleys of the Dart Peak in one of the UK's largest native broadleaf woodland creation projects to breathe new life into the landscape, preserving it for animal habitats and for future generations. Just so happy right now when I'm outside, when I'm outdoors, nature just feels so free. So we've reached the 10k point. The style to nowhere. There's a path up there that goes to Howden Clough. Uh, we're not actually going up that path. We're going to continue around the reservoirs until we turn left and it's really steep and I'm already dying. I think it's just a shock because with the lockdown, we've not really been doing too much long distance walking. Been doing a few local walks and trying to slowly increase the distance with those. So I'm really grateful to be here today. This is the Turbine House, built in 2017, which is home to the Howden Mini Hydroelectric Project to provide years and years of renewable power to the grid, saving 760 tonnes of carbon dioxide per year. When you get to that little hut, a reminder, because the left turn is just coming up. Here it is. So this is what we're looking for. Public footpath to Uden via Broomhead for Bradfield and Strines. Don't know if I've said that right, but anyway, it's up this nice path. Looks like we've got some daffodils as well. Now entering the High Peak Estate, an area of Pennine Moorland in the ownership of the National Trust in the Dark Peak area of Derbyshire. This is where the real fun begins, going up into the hills towards Derwent Edge. This is ridiculously steep. I wasn't dying before. I definitely am now. I was grateful for the spectacular views on the ascent, giving me a good excuse to stop and catch my breath. Right, so when you get to this style here, on the left hand side, just go over this one. Then you can see the, the path it leads up the hill. We can do this guys, we've got this. So we're getting higher up now. You can definitely feel it. <laughs> this path isn't the best as you can see. <laughs> the hill it's coming to view. I like try and conquer and get to the top of it and not give up. Feeling like I'm a little bit tired if I'm honest. Definitely need to stop giving myself a hard time and then just be proud of how far you're at. I'm gonna be really honest right now. I'm not feeling this. Look at that. I've been climbing and it just feels exhausting. I can do this. Yes, one step at a time. The climb up towards Lost Lad was a challenging steep section. I found that I had to stop every few minutes to catch my breath and recover. In these moments, I doubted my fitness ability, comparing it to the times I used to race up the hill. And strangely, I felt quite frustrated. It was like I was punishing myself for not feeling strong enough. Quite boggy underneath. Thank you to whoever has put these big stones 
Soon enough, this negative mindset turned into a positive one as I reached the cairn of Lost Lad at 518 metres. It's remarkable how many different emotions you go through at different stages of a hike. The name Lost Lad refers to a legend about a shepherd boy from the lost village of Derwent. According to the legend, the boy became lost on the moors in a blizzard and died. His body was found the following spring by a passing shepherd and nearby were the words Lost Lad written on a rock. As well as a cairn, a toposcope can also be found. A toposcope is a kind of graphic display built at viewing points on hills or mountains which indicates the direction and usually the distance to notable landscape features. On a clear day like today, you could see many of the hills in the distance, such as Mamtor and Kinder Scout. Ahead is a clear view of Lost Lad's parent peak, Baktor, my next destination. I can't get over there. That is the biggest loop ever. <laughs> there it is. It's a great feeling when you see the highest point of the walk because you know that you can only go down from that point. I've got a few bog issues here. I've got this close, I am not giving up. There has to be a way up there. <laughs> I will get to you somehow. <laughs> Reaching the summit of Baktar at 538 metres, I was reminded that it doesn't matter what your speed is and that persistence and determination to reach the summit is what counts most. Just the experience of being there, present in the moment, reaching the top, it filled me with a sense of achievement. I enjoyed the views of the impressive rock formations and wondered how these awesome structures had formed over the many thousands of years, pondering over how marvellous nature is. The route is straightforward from this point as it simply follows the path along the edge. Derwent Edge has several examples of unusually shaped gritstone tors which have been formed by the harsh actions of wind, rain and frost over many centuries. These tors have been named over the years by local residents and have now been officially titled on Ordnance Survey maps. The first, Cakes of Bread, then Salt Cellar and then Wheel Stones also known as coach and horses, as they resemble a coach and horses on the horizon when viewed from the snake pass. That's what hiking is for me, it's just a way of escape, freedom and <laughs> just love it. Just as I was taking that footage, my phone fell flat on its face and now my phone screen it has a nice big crack down the middle of it, but you know what? I love my Samsung SA, it's trusted, it's served me well. It's about getting outdoors for the benefit of not just physical health but mental health. I know from personal experience that it's an absolute miracle for my health, definitely my mental health, to be outdoors and to take in all that sunshine definitely the best thing to do to make the most of it and I just really want to spread that message of hope and inspiration to all of you guys and I want you to come on this journey with me. I'm going to be covering a lot of different routes, it's going to be a mixture of all sorts. I just want to share with you my experiences and hopefully inspire you to follow your dream, whatever that might be, whether it is to go outdoors and get hiking or whether you have your own personal goals for your own life. It's about just stepping out of your comfort zone really, not letting anything stop you from seeing things like this because, I mean look at this, you can't miss that. I hope it's been quite a tough time for all of us, for many reasons, but for me it's hit me with loneliness and we've all got our own personal struggles but the main thing is that we 
to overcome them. Take small steps, get outside. I'd love to encourage you to get to the beautiful nature and see what it's got to offer because it is outstanding. I will be releasing more content over the next few weeks and months. I just look forward to getting to know you and I want to create a like-minded community of people who also want to strive to be the best version of themselves that they can be. I could go on forever so that's why I've got to stop now. It might even get dark and I'm still in the middle of nowhere. I apologise for all the um, um, um and the stuttering. I want to make a connection with you guys and I feel like Doing a video is probably the best way to you to get an idea of what I'm about and what Positive Strides is about. So, um, sorry, I've just said um again. <laughs> if there's an opportunity to go outside, do it. <laughs> Hello, sheepy. We have a friend. We are not alone. It's like, mmm, this is tasty. The Millstone Grit forms the edge of the High Peak Moorland Plateau on the eastern side of the valley above Lady Bower Reservoir, the edges being the last remains of the gritstone which originally covered all of the Peak District, most of which was scraped off by glaciers in the last Ice Age. British gritstone in the past was used to make coarse millstones, which at the time were used to mill flour, grind wood into pulp for paper, and it was also manufactured into grindstones to sharpen metal blades. The rough surface provides outstanding friction, enabling climbers to stand on or grip the subtlest of features in the rock, and as a result, Derwent Edge is very popular with rock climbers. It's amazing how far you can see on a clear day. I have missed this so much. I'm just absolutely delighted to be here. Back in a national park, on a trail. That's where my heart is the happiest. Here is the footpath where you need to turn right back to Derwent. So let's do that now. And we're heading down now. So back to the reservoirs. Hopefully it won't be as hard as it was going up. It's been a while since I've done a proper hike. I think throughout lockdown it's made me feel afraid of going out again. I don't know if any of you can relate to that maybe. I don't want to say I'm terrified of humans but I do sort of have a little panic when I see quite a big group coming towards me. Especially when I'm on my own I feel sort of interrogated. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. You just get so much out of hiking. If you have felt really isolated and trapped, whether that's physically or mentally, I, I really just want to encourage you to get outside and challenge yourself, do something. It doesn't have to be a 15 mile hike, it can be a one mile hike. You might have not even set foot out the door yet. That's what it's all about, just doing what will benefit us. And that's different for everyone. I know for me today, this has been really amazing, definitely have confidence issues. Hiking is my lifeline, it really is. Being outside and breathing in that fresh air, it's hard depending on what track you do. I was dying earlier with the hill, but the sense of satisfaction you get when you reach the top is just, you can't describe it. You just have to do it. So if there's a walk you wanna do that's been on your mind for a while, just do it, <laughs> just do it. You will not regret it. There's not many walks that I've ever regret in my life, to be honest, except for the ones where it's absolutely horrendous weather. Carry on down this path. See if I can figure out how to, it's, oh dear. Gosh. Oi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm absolutely useless. I'm trying to open. As you can see, the downhill is now upon us, which is a relief to my legs. Although, actually, sometimes I find downhill quite difficult. It just depends on the gradient. Got some stunning views. It's a little bit more hazy now. Don't mind that. As long as it's not raining, I'm happy. Oh, um. I think I can open this gate a little bit better than the last one. <laughs> In fact, I don't think that's... I don't think I can shut that one properly, but never mind. Oh look, another gate. 
Hi House Farm. Oh, I can't open it. Oh dear. Done it. That was a proud moment. <laughs> Approaching the end of the walk, I started to reflect on the challenges that I had overcome on the hike and how relevant this is to everyday life. That with perseverance, patience, hope, strength and determination, you will reach your goals. I was so grateful for the stunning landscape, for the freedom to explore it, and the freedom from my negative thoughts. I was living in the moment and it felt so good. You don't have to go all around those reservoirs before you start this walk up the hill. Oh my gosh, we've got another good. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's all sorts of different routes you can do here. I've pushed myself a little bit today, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing to do it every now and again. As long as you're being sensible. I can't get out of here. <laughs> How many gates are there? This is a really awkward gate. Look at that now. We're on the final little down section. You feel like you've achieved something. You've had a purpose to live out. Enjoyed it at the same time. I'm smiling quite a lot right now. Quite frankly, I've forgotten how that felt for quite a long time. The two existing reservoirs were not enough and so work started on the third dam, Lady Bower, in 1935. Construction continued throughout World War II despite the difficulty in finding materials and labour. So here is where this trail joins the track. Building the Lady Bower Dam meant flooding the villages of Derwent and Ashopton despite much local opposition. The reservoir was completed in 1943. Here is Lady Bower. Now there's two ways to go. You can go back around if you've parked in the main car park. If you feel like you've got a few more miles in the tank, you can go around Lady Bower and then you head back up there to the car park. There's more friends. We've had a sheep friend and now we've got duck friends. I'm walking around Lady Bower now. I've decided to take the left turn. I feel like I've got a few more miles in me. During the hot summer of 2018, the water levels of Lady Bower Reservoir fell so much that the lost village of Derwent emerged from it and you could see the ruins. We turn right and go over the bridge. We're now walking along the other side of Lady Bower Reservoir. We're getting there now. The trail here is definitely a scenic one, but there's so much more to it. Not only is it picturesque, there's a lot of history that makes this walk educational too. Maybe this video has encouraged you to visit and you will experience it for yourself someday soon. I still can't get over how tall these trees are. That blue sky makes me happy. We're nearly back at the car. I just want to thank you so much for coming on this adventure with me today in the beautiful Peak District at Derwent Reservoir. It's been a wonderful day out. I've been so ready for it, as I'm sure most of you will be after all the lockdown we've had. I hope I've inspired you in some way to get those hiking boots out, our trainers or whatever, to get out and get some fresh air. It does us so much good to get away from the screen, she says, while she's filming on the screen. It's great to just be reunited again with nature. I hope to release some more content coming weeks and months. Please keep in touch with my socials. I've got Facebook, YouTube and Instagram at the moment and I'll be surely happy to have you join the community of people who just want to make a positive difference to their lives. Last year has taught us that hasn't it to make the most of what we have. Thank you very much guys. I'll see you later. There's my baby. I was getting really worried I forgot where I parked her. Oh. We are back.